Welcome to the studio. Today I'm just going to uh, work with a uh, scrap piece of paper uh, and uh, this painting here. I'm not going to do any drawing. This is going to be about watercolor timing. Uh, when to do uh, certain things. When you can uh, make this foreground look like a foreground and splash water in it and uh, so on. So what we're going to do is just loosely paint this. This is not going to be a finished painting. I'm just not going to do any drawing either. Just going to do some sky in here, but I want it to look like something. So I got some cobalt blue into here. Going to drop that there. You'll notice my table has dropped down from perhaps the last video or maybe two videos ago. So I've got a little bit less angle on it, and what that's going to do is make it flow a little slower. It's going to put the brakes on everything here. So it's, see, it's coming down a little slower, and it buys you time. It's all part of the timing in this watercolor. Here, now you've got a little sky going on here, and that's fine. This is all, you know, you can lift a little color. You've got some, a few clouds, a few little cumulus starting there. So I'm just going to leave that just like that, and then maybe add just a little bit, introduce a little bit of more blue up into here here like that there anyways it's not about that it's going to be about timing so let's get going with that here so i'm going to come across here i'm going to cut cut across here and i'm going to give myself a little bit of room here for this barn in the and just about like that there and I can remember about perspective even if your photo is not looking perfect. You still got to remember your perspective in this and this is an early or late spring uh, photo and uh, so it's nice because there's not the trees that just started to leaf out so I can see the dif difference in the, that barn. So I left a little space for the barn here not necessarily the silo because it's going to be darker anyway so that's fine just like that there. So what you can do with this is to pick it up, pick up your bead that you put in here, or you can just wash, keep washing it down. And here I'm going to have trees, so the moisture in the paper is going to help. And timing, yeah, how dry that is is going to determine how much of that bloom you're going to get. So here we got some mountains, so I've got some just water on the brush here, and I'm going to come across like that, just like the mountain. So I'm cutting into the mountain here like that. And you can do this with a dry brush and you can just pick that moisture up here like that to help dry it. Like that and like that there. And put that brush aside here and try not to snap on it. If it that's what fell. Um, and then we get some, we some mountains here so I need some blue. I'm going to mix up some warm blue for these mountains. If there's such a thing as a warm blue, I'm just gonna, it looks kind of green, so I'm cooling off the green and the, you know, the brown look to that mountain there a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in here. So this is gonna bloom a little bit, and we all know that because it's wet above, but that's fine. And it's not strong enough, you can tell that right away. And, but it's all right for a first layer. Come across, read about to there. Smooth that out there and release this pigment. And close the brush here, just like that there. And it's going to blend into these trees below. So the moisture that you have in your brush is going to let it bloom up just like that into there. So, and I see we got it's just working up into the sky here a little bit, which is just fine. And yeah, we're going to blue this off some more. So I'm just going to. A little blue on my brush here. So I'm cooling that off. It's a little wet and wet. And I'm going to leave some of these little brown marks in here. Little warm marks. And I'm just going to let that develop like it wants. And if we need to fix it after, we can. Just like that there. So the timing that I'm getting at is going to be right in the 
foreground here. Now where's my level here? I've got the mountains here. So see this dark that's pooling here? I'm going to use that to my advantage. And I'm going to drop in some green, some dark green into here and just let that bead going down into here like that. And come across to these trees here. That silo is going to be down into boat here. Not quite yet. There's the roof of the barn. This is like I say, it's not going to be a finished painting. It's just going to be a demo on this foreground and timing. It's a one take deal. There'll be no editing in this video. And there we go there. So I'm going to leave that in there and I want my horizon line a little straighter. That's the drawback of having to wear bifocals so you can see. Just you can't you gotta line things up a little bit better, spend a little bit more time doing that, making sure they're right. Just like that there. And I'm gonna drop in some more color. And because of the angle of my table, that color is gonna pool down at the bottom there. And I wish you could see like a, a speeded up version of this because it's It'll dry with that pigment here. It'll dry with extra pigment right in there. I'm going to have to let it dry before I continue with that area there. So we got our barn here. We got a bit of a highlight in the barn. I got a great big brush. So we're going to get a smaller brush and it's a dark red. I'll just find something that's a dark red here. The other thing I wanted to show you is how to mix colors on the paper versus mixing it in your palette. You mix colors in your palette, you're going to get one color, the color that you hopefully wanted. And so if you mix colors on the paper, you're doing this. And, and then get the shape of a barn a little bit right here anyways. You're doing this here. And you don't have to necessarily like it the first time that you put it on and that's the beauty of mixing colors on the paper like this is way too bright of a color right now just going to bring that across like that a little bit more and i'm going to preserve that roof over there you see we're gonna it's quinacridone um sienna i think is what this thing is this color is here so i cut around that like that in there and there's like a cement wall below this so just gonna go like that and square that off a little bit right up to my roof line there now if you don't like that there's no problem if you don't like that I'm just gonna get some neutral gray and just drop in your neutral gray this is the beauty about mixing on the paper you're not stuck with what you put on there as long as it's still wet then it'll mix and it might look really dark to begin with and that's going to flow down right to that line there. I might have to help it a little bit here in that area because of the moisture content in it. And I'm just going to let that go. And you see we've got the tonal values about the same there with that over there. So we're okay. And I'm preserving the brightness of my roof here. And if you want, you can put in a few of these rusty bits that are going down the roof like that. There, I'm getting a little bit over detail here detailed in this uh, part of the painting and that's nice there uh, so and then I've got some gray on the bottom here now this gray I can't touch into that or else it's going to flow down so I'm just going to blow it I'm just going to get a indication of this gray in there just like that and the wall is red going over here so what you can do is just bring it back like that and so once you've got that base color over here that you like, you bring it over here, pick it up with your brush. And you want to dry it off. You can dry it off with a paper towel. And get along that roof line just like that. There. And as that tightens up, as that dries up, picking up a little pigment there. You've got a nice tone. It almost looks exactly like that. So if you don't like that, if you want to go cooler, say cooler, darker, or whatever, you can just grab a color out of your palette and mix some more on the paper there. And I'm going to keep mixing that. I want to add a little bit more red in the there. So there it is. A little brighter and a little more red. So trees are going to cover that. So you see as this is drying here as I'm talking, you can move that pigment that's on the bottom here 
So it's going to be out of focus as I pull it up here, but the pigment is moving down here, it's moving this way here, just to give you some highlights there. So we've got a nice hill in the background, our trees are blending nicely into there, and now you can put in a color of these trees into here, just to reinforce that you got you got trees coming up here. Moisture content, this is just right now for doing this. Just drop your colors in, it'll paint itself. Leave some of these white areas. I'm going to cover that white area there. No, white, that's too white. And painting itself. So I'm going to frame that a little bit and bring your eye into that painting, into that horizon line, like that. And I'm going to keep dropping some pigment into there. A little darker, a little darker, thicker pigment. And it's going to hang there a little bit better. And I come down. Drop a little bit more along this horizon line in here like that. And we just let that bloom just like that. And I'm going to get some other colors into here. A little bit strong, so I just picked it up. And I'll get a little bit of a... I got some of this uh, quinacridone sienna in my palette here, so I'm just going to drop some of that in there. So that's just fine like that. So basically everything is dry here, and on this I can run this right into the bottom of this barn here now. And it's dried up, it's a little bit late for doing that, but my silo is going to be right there. So with your silo, what you can do now, this is still just a little bit damp. And the top of your silo is the only thing that you're going to want to preserve here, just get a little bit. This is a brand new brush, I haven't used it yet, except for today. Um, so I'm going to get a different one to do this with. I think I missed the water entirely there, there's no water in that. So as I wet this, it's going to separate the pigment that you've already put down onto here. This is a lot easier than cutting all that in there. So already we've got a bit of a shape of a silo going on. And I know this is about timing, so I want to mention that I couldn't do this when the sky was more wet. There, so now we've got a white top in our silo, and we're good, we're off to the races there. And I can go darker there. This is too wet to be dragging that down there, so we're going to go ahead and put in our horizon here just like that and just find some just finding some leftover colors in the palette there and I quite like this little bright color I've got right here just like that well, it look brighter than that on the palette so you can always change it get some green gold I've just wet my palette bring that right across just like that there and I want to go maybe a little bit lighter on that horizon line. And I'm also, besides going lighter, I'm going to change the tone of it, change the color. And you know what? I'm just going to come straight across. And I'm going to put in another color into there. So you notice I picked some color up off of my palette and it was in the middle there. So it helped me paint that leaving those sparkles there and to help me paint leaving a little bit of a darker line there and lighter in the distance here. So now we want to strengthen our colors and you can mix greens, you can whatever you've got in your palette here and go in and it helps to work with that bead here, it really does it as you're coming down. You can see a little bit of shadow from the iPad there but you can see the pigment pooling a little bit where what's called the bead. Joseph Bookvich calls it that, so everybody calls it that because he's an amazing artist. And uh, it's easy to understand if you call it that. And so coming down here, I've got some other colors coming in here. They're dandelions. They have a big kind of a dandelion bloom. The time of year where we took this, I took this photo. A little bit of quinacridone gold. I wet this palette a little bit beforehand. And it's important to let this develop on its own. A little sparkle there, I'm just going to leave that there just like that. And I'm just going to drag a brush with some moisture on it. 
just like that. And into there. So as I work down here, I want to go to a little bit stronger colors. I'm going to go to an undersea green, believe it or not, down here. I'm going to go really strong down into this bottom part here. And I'm going to put that band right above there. Maybe one just, just like shadows in this field right about there. And I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. I'm going to pick some of this up and run it right off the page here, just like that. Just so it's blended in there. Of course, you don't want that big spot right there. But I'm going to run that this way here and then back over here. I'm going to leave some sparkles into there just like that. Okay, so now this is really this, the part that I wanted to show you here. You can get, I've got some yellow gouache that I can put in that's going to that would diffuse nicely in there. Um, you want some fairly thick paint here for your splatter to get the idea of these, uh, just the indication of this these uh, dandelions here and you can see that silo kind of painted itself it's not about that we're not probably not going to finish this paint anyways and we're going to splatter some of these dandelion yellow colors into here and if we want to go this is not gouache this is a yellow a daniel smith yellow that's just sitting in my palette here and that's i'm just getting those blooms there so this is just like splattering water on your painting so you splatter water on your painting what's going to happen is going to get the that little it's just going to grow it's just going to blend into the water or blend into the color setting in your painting here so i'm going a little stronger now and yes i get it all over my hands and that and uh, you can wear gloves if you want i don't I just wash my hands. Anyway, so now we can add any other colors that you want to throw in there if you got, and it, the, all the brushes splatter differently too. So because this was just a certain moisture content, we just did it and the lower we went, the thicker it was, I let it dry just a little bit. And that's why it's having that effect that it has. It's just developing into a really neat foreground there. And these foregrounds, they, Develop the best if you just let them do their thing. Quit and don't interfere with it. I'm just going to put that up here like that. Another piece of paper towel up here. Yep, and then you can splatter some darker darks in there. Some, I got some purple kind of color in here. Not, I like what that's doing there. So again, timing, really important. Timing is what is going to get you the rest of the detail that we're going to put in there. I'm going to get my rigger brush ready and I've got a little palette knife ready here and timing. So I'm going to put in, I'm just going to wet this and make it come to a point. And if you start pulling up these detail grasses here now, what's going to happen is it's just going to fill in. You see it's going to fill in here and, and you can see it's just disappearing. It's developing on a paper really nicely. We've got a medium textured paper here and it's, it's really doing a nice job all by itself without me interfering anymore with it. And I don't know what I got on the page here, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so the, even this color here, you see you drag this up here, much too wet to be doing this right now. So we need a little patience wait for it. You can do a little bit now and it's going to give you some variations but it's not going to give you these fine little grasses that I want to put in here. See it's giving you the little indications here and it's like oh okay that's exactly why I want it, what I wanted but the problem is it's too wet. It's still moving on the page. If you put this video into a, a speed it up version which you can do in the bottom here you'll see it um, quickly change it's amazing how quickly it changes, but if you're just staring at it, looking at it, you, could, you know, it's like watching grass grow, but you, you're not seeing it very quickly. So it's easier to understand if you speak, kind of speed up the video and then rewind it and play it back again. Now, thanks again to all the new subscribers. Please subscribe if you haven't done so, or if you know somebody that wants to paint watercolor and improve their skills, please share this uh, channel. I've also got a super thanks button, which is down on this corner here in certain video formats that you're watching. And it's just a uh, donation button. If you 
like uh, the content and uh, got a couple of dollars to donate to the channel go to the good cause I'm just gonna go to a good cause it's just uh, gonna go towards uh, improving studio equipment so thank you very much for that so there I've just put in some titanium weight in there as I was waiting for this to dry so I'm, it, the other thing is using a palette knife is a great way to get some more detail into here like that and you could just look try it and see if it closes right in and it's giving us a white highlight there you can see here it's closing in closing in closing in it's almost going to disappear so two things you can do wait or you can take more pigment out just like that and then it'll close in just like that and uh, it'll close in to the size of the you know the grasses that you want over there all right so this is dried a little bit more here now and you can work on getting these old grasses they're just the highlights just the, the you know the sunlight that's just shining on these grasses don't do it too much there's a you can just kind of see when you've done enough here and that's about it right there so uh, just for fun I'm going to go and um, finish off this little mountain back here and I should have done that at the beginning but it wasn't meant to be a finished painting so just gonna go and uh, finish that off what I could do it's mostly trees that are into here anyway and it'll look really different if I do this and but it'll look a little bit closer than this diffused top into here so what one thing I could do I just run clean water there and just let it go up into that or I can leave that just for now just like that so we got some other trees in here I know it's not going to be a finished painting I'm just going to get some gray in here uh, come here but it's the light in this painting is looking good I'm getting the way of my own light here as I'm talking this is uh sun's from this side here yeah so we're going to come in with some pretty dark a little thicker pigment mixing on paper again but I'm mixing the same color I just put in a light layer of that color this is neutral gray into here and I don't want to over paint this that's going to be the key here and I'm going to come across this side of this dome just like that and I want some of this the rusty roof business to show up here and what's going to happen it's going to grab some of this dark business here that I put in here and bring it down to there and just with just with a wet brush I've taken the pigment off rinse my brush off I want to just bring some of this over just like that and come down with just clean water just like that there and I can go darker afterwards I get some thick pigment this is wet so the thicker your pigment is again timing you got wet pigment or wet uh, paper you need to use thick pigment if you want it to help to help it stay put a little bit more so you run that down right into there I'm just gonna let that develop and dry my brush off see it separate from there and I'm gonna pick that pigment up in that straight line coming down I'm going over the edge of this bar but it really doesn't matter just like that and my barn doesn't have any doors or windows or anything yet in it so you can go in here and just put just a hint of one in there and I'm going to put something in here as well and under here under the roof line I've got some moisture on my hand here but it doesn't really matter you can go in here and do that there and under this one here like that and so we're going to wet this this would be all about timing here again so you wet this and then you can drop some trees in there while it's wet I've only wet it up to a certain amount so or a certain height so 
it's not going to go. It's going to just tighten up as we go higher here. So that's what it's done right there. And I'll let it come down, go a little stronger at the bottom. So our table's at an angle. It's going to pool at the bottom just like that there. And bottom like that. And then here we can go in and put some more in there. But I want to push that part of the field back. So I want to leave it developed like it is there. And you can come across just clean water. Clean that up a little bit. And that's about it right there. So you've seen what we can do if we wait the right amount of time. Just be uh, uh, careful of your moisture content in the paper. On your brush. And the timing, the timing when you do certain things, when you splatter, when you put in, you know, certain elements of it. And you can you can pull off a D, it's like it's a DD little painting, and we didn't even do a preliminary drawing, and we've done it in, what, half an hour, 20 minutes, and, uh, and we're good there. So, um, sometimes these turn out really well if you don't fuss too much with it. I got a little bit of sepia here, and I, what this other thing that, this does here once everything is dry enough it's just got a little bit of moisture content that's not going to spread this pigment too much you can go in under all the little white bits that you left behind and put in some more little darks and you don't have to be too careful that you're putting in too dark a pigment here because what you can do is just get your paper towel once further away and soften them a little with your paper towel and that's about it. Not bad for a scrap piece of paper. It's got a uh, brown painting on the back side of this. So, but uh, I just wanted to show you a video about timing. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And super thanks if you feel like uh, leaving a thanks and a little donation. Uh, appreciate you watching again. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.